Okay. Welcome back. Um, we're focusing now on Bielsa. And of course, uh, you will recall that uh, December 5th is a very important date in the mm -hmm. history of Bielsa State. Mm -hmm. It is a date set aside for the governorship elections and the heat is on. All the parties are doing the best that they can to get to the Creek Haven, which is the government house of Bielsa State. But of course, in politics, a lot still has to be done and do not mistake Bielsa's small size for its importance. It's a very important state and don't forget that is the home state of the former president. Good luck, Jonathan. So every candidate has his work cut out. It's my pleasure this morning to discuss the politics in Bielsa State at the moment, looking towards the governorship elections of December 5th. It's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Moses Siasia, who is the uh, governorship can who was. Oh, he is. oh, he is. I'm sorry. Who is the governorship candidate on the platform of the People's Democratic Movement? Good Thank morning, Mr. Siasia. Thank you very much. Uh, on my left here is Honorable Alfred. Keme Pado, who is the senior special assistant to the governor on special duties. Thank you very much. As well as Chief Don Abednego Evarada, who is SA to the Bielsa governor on public affairs. Yeah. It's my pleasure having me. He lapped that up. He lapped Always. that up. <laughs> Always. <clears throat> now, let me begin with the, the youngest candidate in the race, Mr. Siasia. What are your chances? You look too young to be in this political uh, race. And that's the issue, and um, that's the reason why I've decided to take this um, uh, courageous step, you know, to bring about the total liberation of our generation, the young people. Um, you would agree with me that we have been nourished by generations of broken promises. As young people in this country, um, we don't have a very good um, platform, you know, to encourage young people to strive both economically and politically. And today, as a businessman, this is my first political outing, you know, to be sincere, and uh, as a businessman, because I understand that my state at the moment is bleeding, and then uh, some of us who have these ideas, new ideas to bring into um, leadership and also to transform our state and create a sustainable future for our people, have decided to take up this courageous step. And I believe, um, looking at the political Goliath that I'm going to fight, um, a lot of people have told me, Moses, do you want to die? You're a very young man. You have a lot of great prospect. You're doing well in business. Why do you want to venture into politics? But, you know, I'm not afraid to die. The only thing I'm afraid of is not trying. So I want to try. I want to see. And I want to liberate our young people. And I want to create a positive future for Bielsa State. Hmm. <coughs> well said. Well said. Now let me come to Don. <coughs> Chief Evarada, mm. yes, the last time you were here, we spoke about your principal's chances. And there was a, an APC man here who was certain that his party was going to um, push you guys out of power or you push your principal out of power. What, what is it looking like right now? What are the permutations? Yeah, uh, to be very modest in my assessment of the situation on ground, of a truth I tell Nigerians, and indeed by essence, who are listening. The chances of Governor Henry Siraka Dixon being re-elected isn't about a guess anymore. It is too clear for even the blind to wonder whether they can see it. Because even the blind can see it by feeling. It's obvious. Reason being that he hasn't just performed within these three years. But I think he has gone far in assuring that, look, he creates the right platforms. He brings the mindset of the people to the true essence of governance. And that's why we're saying a good governor is not judged by what he says, but he is judged by what he said, what he has done, and what the people are saying. The situation on ground is not about the sea or flurry of endorsements of Henry Sirake Dixon for second term, no. It's about the people running their lines of assessment and saying, look, this was our situation before you came, and let me mention the first one. Because this, these are the areas that our campaigns are hinged on, in spite of the wonderful performance of this governor. Security. A state that was rated as the most unsafe 
in this country, as the security assessors and managers, they will tell you, Bayes State was rated as the most unsafe state as at the time this governor came in 2012. The question is, what is the situation on ground today? If you ask security assessors all over the country, I stand to be corrected, but I doubt whether anyone can say that. Bayes State is rated among the best in the country, in spite of minor, you know, existence of crime, which of course is necessary in every thriving society. Impliedly, we're saying this administration has made huge investments protecting lives and property. Notes: the constitution clearly states that before we go further, let us ensure that lives and properties are protected. Above all, it is security that determines the sub structures and their existence in any functional society. So, on security, wonderful infrastructure. What was the condition of Bayes State before the coming of this governor? And we're saying Bayes State was rated as a state that never knew infrastructure. There are scratches, no doubt, without wanting to verify anyone who was a, a, a past governor in the state. But the truth remains that from construction of roads to bridges to hospitals, I, could, I don't know how to start again, but the truth remains. Oh, that look, let me just mention this, this is very order. important. Very important. This is hardly, Some of the this bridges, is hardly a soapbox. Oh, I understand. That is why I'm not dramatizing, but Thank I'm just you. saying it the Thank way it ought you. to be. It remains a look. Bridges that were started from the creation of Bayes State. And administration after administration came and thought, oh, this is a monumental uh, stress that I cannot stand. Note, there was a concept called the mystery of underdevelopment in the Niger Delta. A governor came and decided to demystify it. What do I mean? They used to say that the terrain is so difficult that we cannot develop. Not, not just Bayes leaders including national government, agencies and institutions of government again and again. But this governor came and said, we will cross the bridges. We will tear the forest. We will use the, the strongest one okay. All Mara, of that has been done and the bridges Mara, and the roads have been uh, built. Sir, and we are saying the Mr. people Mara, are benefiting from this wonderful benevolence of this governor. But Mr. above Mara, all, the governor is not singing praise. By are saying, because you've done well, we will let you do and sustain what you started. Okay. Seeing that no. there are two of you, Against one man, you be good. You hit your point. We are not even against him. He's part of the family. He's part of the family. Yes, he is. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> I want to respond to what he actually said. No, no, no not me. one second. Just hold, hold on, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. You would respond. I want to bring this man in to say what he needs to say. Then you respond. Okay. Um, came up Bado, right? He's talked about security, but let's look at the uh, things about re-election, for instance. The first election. Um, elected governor, democratically elected governor, Adamesia, when he was seeking re-election, he succeeded, but he was almost overrun, but he succeeded. But a few months after re-election, he was impeached. Governor, former Governor Silva is still seeking re-election. What's the guarantee that your principal would be re-elected in spite of what he's done? Because he said something that the other governors had come, they had started things, but they did not finish. Your governor has come in and demystified all of that and finished them. What's the guarantee that he'll be re-elected? I think um, the answer is in the question. The guarantee that he will be re-elected lies at the people. And just like Don Ibarada said, the people are satisfied, the people are happy. But let me just tell you what the problem looks like. Uh, not the problem with us, but the problem with those who want to have problems with themselves is like, instead of canvassing these developmental strides, and making people understand that this is the most sustainable way to go about governance. They are busy building resentment. Let me tell you something. You ask the question, what is the guarantee that you will be re-elected? You are here in Lagos. Let me give you an example. What do you think should be the guarantee of a governor who crossed the Ebeni Bridge, which is like your third mainland you have here, to, to connect a senatorial district to another district? What will be the guarantee? Wouldn't they vote for him from there? What is the guarantee that the governor who first took road to the Nimbe senatorial district, which is where former governor T.B. Silva comes from? What is the guarantee? What is the guarantee that the governor who is constructing the first road that is linking Southern Ejo, the Opuruma area, what is the guarantee that the governor who is constructing the first road that is pulling through Ekerimo, what is the guarantee that the governor who has made Bayelsa to sleep well. You see, let me tell you something. Probably because you were not in Bayelsa before today, you won't understand. Mm. It used to be that you can go out with two of your phones and you are not sure of coming back with one. It used to be that you can go out 10 o'clock in the night and you are not sure 
of what's going to happen to you. All of that has come to an end. You see, let me tell you something. What, when you say, what is the guarantee? You see, democracy is about the people. So once, 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 once you do that, which the people want, and they are satisfied with your performance, as they can see, not as rhetorics. You know, there is a difference between performance okay. and political rhetorics and, and, and the hearsay that you hear. So right. the guarantee is, lies with the people, and we are working for the people, and the people are happy with us. Okay. Mr. Siasia, security is described as wonderful. Roads and infrastructure, bridges to areas that didn't have bridges and roads before, connecting territorial districts. And they say this is a sustainable way to go, but you don't agree with that. No, but if they are coming here to say things that are not, you know, it gives, you know, people like us, you know, a lot of concern. Because when you find, you know, people who are educated, when you find people who no, are No, 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 one minute. If you say you things that are not, one second. So when you the find projects I have called, one second, please. when you find one second. people who are consigned about the genuine aspirations of our people and where Bayelsa it ought to be at this moment and it's not there, and people are coming to say this and misinform public, it okay. gives me a lot of concern. Are you saying that those now, road, the roads is good. called now? Well, I, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say the governor had not done nothing. No, the, the governor, roads and the projects the, the, I the, called, the I did not. In okay. fact, the Nimbe Road he mentioned, yeah. that Nimbe Road is not Bayelsa State Government Project. That Nimbe Road is Shell and NDDC. Okay. 